hey guys welcome back to another video and this evening i'm outdoors yes it's such a beautiful evening you can see that 5 p.m sunshine just hitting my skin perfectly giving me that perfect glow so today's video you guys i want to talk about how i got scammed and the things i've learned let's get right into it but first let me say welcome to all my newbies welcome 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 Please subscribe to my channel, hit that thumbs up button below, leave a comment and share. This is a story time you guys and I'll be sharing with you how I got scammed. I was moving back home to Jamaica a few years ago. After I made the decision to move, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a permanent move. So of course, renting was my best option at the time. On my days off, I would take a trip here for a day or two just to look around and to view potential properties. All my efforts were unsuccessful because it's not like in the United States where you can go in the newspapers or you can go on Craigslist. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's hard to find residential properties here in Jamaica. I went online and I came across Class A Realty, which is located in Montego Bay. I'm not sure if they're still in business, but I met this wonderful lady who she was so professional. She would arrange all my meetings ahead of time because she understood that I was living overseas and I would have to take a trip here just to view the properties. I traveled here twice and she would take me around in her own car of course which I really really appreciated. I forgot her name. She was really sweet, very professional. I was looking for something that was very close to the airport for obvious reasons for work of course. And also safety is one of my number one priority. So most of the properties that we looked at they just didn't quite make the pick however we came across one property which it wasn't the ideal location or the ideal house but it, it would work and it had great potential I decided I would set up a meeting to meet with the landlord on my next visit and in a few weeks I was back I met up with the landlord he seemed like a very decent human being. He came with a female, which he said that she was his wife. The introduction, the conversation, everything went great. And before he left, he suggested that I provide him with advance money so he can make some minor repairs and renovation on the house because... When I went to view the property, the bathroom and the kitchen, they were missing a few fixtures. The paint on the wall, they were very bright colors, which is just out of this world. And I wanted something different, so I requested that he change the paint, and he agreed. So, of course, I was like, if I can help him help me, by all means, I'm in. So, I advanced him 750 US dollars. This was six years ago. I forgot what the exchange rate was. And he had exactly one month to make all his renovations and repairs so that the place would be ready for me to move in on the first of the month. Now, it was also around the same time that my kids were going to go to school for the fall semester. So, you know, there's a lot of anxiety and anticipation and exactly one week before actually bringing my whole entire family with me i decided my father was here on the island and i asked him to go check on the place for me to see you know if everything was done and if it was ready and to my amazement he said that nothing was done because based on his description of how it was it was the same way i left it a month prior so I reached out to the landlord and I was very furious because I had literally one week and I, he reassured me that it was minor stuff so he could get it all done and it would be ready for me when I get here. Something just came over me and I decided, you know, let my husband come like a couple of days before 
the kids and I, just to make sure everything is in place. And it was just a gut feeling. And ho and behold, he came, nothing was done. And at that point, I started calling. And of course, no response. We reached out to the real estate agent. And unfortunately, we had a disagreement. Now, I do understand everything that she was saying because technically it was my fault. I went ahead and I met with the landlord. But I do remember, quite frankly, on that same day that we were all supposed to meet, I called the office, I called her cell phone, and somehow no response. So sometimes I'm a little suspicious, and I'm not trying to make any accusations or anything, but I'm a little suspicious as to everything that happened on that day, and then everything that transpired after. It just seemed like everything was planned or, you know, everyone was working together. So according to her, she she will not be held responsible for any liabilities because I went ahead and met with the landlord and um, conducted that transaction without her. I had decided to pursue a lawsuit. All the costs that will be incurred, it really didn't make much sense because I was spending more money in fees than actually the money that I lost. So I decided, you know what? It's a loss and there's karma because I strongly believe in karma. And I'll just start all over. And the good news was I did get a place like within days. It wasn't the best. I didn't have a choice and I went along with it. And I actually spent two years in that location. It was perfect at the time especially for the kids and you know I was able to make a few adjustments and we made it as comfortable as we possibly could. I always like to look on the bright side of things and I walked away from this experience with four things. First things first, I strongly recommend doing a background check you do decide to move to Jamaica or wherever in the world, always do a background check on your landlord. Because if you're unable to do a formal check like here in Jamaica, we don't have like a database where everyone's information is stored on their past and their history. So at least you can get a reference or references that can make recommendations regarding their character. That will prevent you from hooking up with people who are scammers, if you get what I'm saying. My second point is to hire a real estate agent. I did that and I regret my actions that followed because the real estate agents, he or she will conduct the necessary checks on the landlords. They'll also assume all liabilities as far as payment is concerned. I went wrong with that and I can admit it. I will never fall victim to that again. But I do recommend you hire a real estate agent. It also has many other benefits because they will broaden your choices or whatever options are available to you. And, you know, everything will be more accessible to you. So hire a real estate agent. My third point is don't pay up front for a promise just like the landlord reassured me he said you know he needed the money at the time to make the renovations and maybe at the time he knew well he wasn't gonna follow through or i can't really say what happened however if i didn't give him that money i wouldn't end up in the position that i was in so You know, people cannot be trusted and they will take your money and just disappear into thin air. So please, please, please don't pay upfront for a promise. My fourth and last point is consider how you pay. For myself, I paid him in cash, my live cash money. And he took it and disappeared. So you want to use credit cards. And, you know, credit cards offer fraud protection. Most places these days accept major credit cards and you want to pay attention to the method that these landlords will be requesting 
because that will give you a sense of their honesty and how they conduct business. They request for you to wire them money through remittance services such as MoneyGram or Western Union. That's a no-no. If they request gift cards or those loadable cards, that is very suspicious. Honest businesses and individuals will never conduct business in that manner. Bear in mind these four points to protect yourself. I'm sure, you know, we always think that we know what we're doing because for myself, I trusted my gut. But then I started getting uneasy feelings and they were correct. I got scammed, you guys. But I lived, I learned, and I'm telling you all about this story. So I'm happy to share my story with you guys. I hope you have grasped a few things from it that you will learn from it or grow from it. We all learn, and some of us, we just learn the hard way or the most horrible things happen to us so that we can make changes and do better in the future. Please don't forget to like and share and please do leave a comment i do enjoy your comments because this is an exchange two-way exchange between myself and you guys and if you have any suggestions on any other videos that you might want to see please feel free to do so thanks for watching